This playthrough is rated T for teen. Hope you're ready for old folks to talk about the good old days. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Well, I'm back here with another episode of Hotel Dust Room 215. In the last episode, we uh, tended to a drink, uh, solve some puzzles, and uh, learned about uh, some things about the hotel. And we need to talk to Dunning about some stuff. So let's go to the restaurant and talk to him. So he should be around here somewhere. Ah, there he is. Huh. Wait, that looks like... Oh, it's Dunning. What's he looking at? Well, the piano. I mean, what else would he be looking at? It's pretty obvious, but anyway, let's go check him out. Hello, Dunning. Oh, right. The, I didn't want to press that because I just had you. We already looked at the piano a while back, so. Hey there. Oh, huh. Oh, it's you, Mr. Hyde. Oh, what do you need? Tell me about the hotel's history. It's history? Now, why in the Sam Hill you want to go ask him about that nonsense? I'm a curious guy. Look, I was just down in the bar and someone told me a little bit about it. Said the bar was built for the hotel's 10th anniversary. That true? So you hear, heard, did you? When was it built? By the way, it doesn't matter which option you choose on this one. I mean, other than random little tidbits, you know. When was this place built? Oh, about 20 years ago, give or take. But back then, place was watched call watched call real popular. Used to have bands playing in the restaurant, even. And weekends were out of control, wild parties and everything. You lie. Sounds like it was the place to be. Yep, used to be all right. But by the time I took over, the place had changed. No more parties or fancy bands. Reputation just went down the crapper. Hmm. Well, that's a little... I wonder what happened to have that happen in the first place, so... Anyway, when did you take over? How long have you been running the place? About five years now. I'd been thinking about starting up business when I saw this hotel for sale. The place was going for a song, so I bit... Talk about a sucker. Should have just buried my cash in a damn hole. I thought a hotel would be a perfect way to make some quick scratch. Quick scratch for a hotel? Yeah, maybe you might want more of a motel or something like that, but... Of course, after opening, I did nothing but break my back every damn day. Can't tell you how many times I thought about hightailing it back to my old job. What'd you do originally, I wonder? But I tightened my belt and just kept a running. Thanks to good people like yourself, of course. Yeah. Don't, don't, uh, don't butter us up too much. What were you looking at, anyway? So, what were you staring at when I came in? Uh, pictures. Pictures? Yep, take a look above the piano. See them frames? Got lots of old shots of places in there. Or place in there. They're all pictures, guests, and, uh, pictures of guests in the restaurants. Most of them are from before my time here. That old, huh? Real comedian, ain't you, Hyde? Of course they're all up and gone now. Shucks, even a hard ass like me can get a bit weepy thinking about the past. Hmm. What'd you do before? Yeah, what'd you do before you ran this place? What do you mean, my job? Ain't no business of yours. Yeah, well, someone's, uh... Someone's a little uh, hot or something, we'll getting all defensive and stuff like that. Well, fine. How'd you get this place? Tell me something, Dunny. How does a guy like you get into a hotel, into hotel management? Uh, it ain't nothing special. I was just your average paper pusher, you know. You saved up enough money to buy a hotel by working in an office? Yep, pretty much. So what's a hotel run you these days? I ain't telling you that. It's a secret. It's a secret to everyone. Come on, you can tell me. I said no. You don't just start asking about other people's cash flow. Ain't right. Ah, uh, that's enough of hearing me, Jaw. I gotta get back to work. Uh, I won't stop you. And by the way, Mr. Angel in 213 called me up a few minutes ago. He told me that whole mess of his is taken care of. 
found his missing stuff in his own room, just where I told him it was. Maybe you could quit this gig and go tell fortunes. Don't I know it. Last thing I need was the fuzz sniffing around my joint. Dunny heads out of the restaurant. Well then, that was interesting. Another, another mystery to solve, but uh, not major importance. So let's head on out, so. Mr. Hyde? What now? You're still here? Not a problem? No, no, just the opposite. It's perfect, just perfect. Is it a vase just for me? Rosa, slow down a second. Yeah, what's what's perfect? What's perfect? Listen, you're free, right? Sure you are. Well, I need a favor from you. Again? Just listen. It's about the restaurant. See, sometimes when our guests order wine, they like to keep the labels. Well, when that happens, we always deliver it to their room later. But I'm as busy as, I, as can be, and Louie has to run that darn bar of his. And so neither of us can spare the time to do it. And then when I saw you, I thought... You thought I'd do it. Oh, aren't you sharp? Yes, that's what my th that's my thought exactly. I do this and you're just going to give me a dustpan. Hush, I'll not. And I'll give you a free breakfast to make up for it. Free food, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, Kyle's like, hold on a second. Keep talking. We got fresh blueberry muffins. My very own Spanish omelets. Ole. Sounds good. I'm not a big fan of Spanish omelets myself. I like just plain omelet, omelets, you know, egg, cheese, maybe some bacon or, or sausage or a ham every once in a while. So you do it? Oh, say you will, Mr. Hyde. Fine. What's the damn label? Language. And the label goes to Miss Parker up in room 212. The old woman. It's quite a touching story, actually. Yes, it is. You see, Miss Parker ordered wine ten years ago when she came with a friend. So tonight, the poor woman ordered that very same bottle of wine. I didn't want to snoop, but I watched her drink it, and she looked so sad. Well, when she's finished, she started talking about this and that. And she told me how she wanted to take the label home with her. I mean, that's interesting, I guess. I mean, people collect the strangest things. Labels are the least worried, so... Who did Helen, who did Helen come here with? Who did you come with ten years ago? Oh, I'm sure I have no idea. I told you all I know, Mr. Hyde. Why are you so nosy? Just my way. But if Rosa had a guess... Why are you talking to a third person? I'd say it was her son. Yes, I would. Her son? Oh, I can't say for sure, but I'm sure it's true. You don't say. I just know it. And I saw how she talked to him back then. I know she's just like me. Wait, you have a son as well? well? I mean, you're old enough, I guess. I mean, it's not guaranteed, but she's just like you. Hold on. How is Helen Parker just like you? Her son, silly. He lives far away, just my, my boy. You sure about that? Of course. Well, kind of. Stop confusing me. Listen, I may not know the first thing about a personal life, but I know I'm right. I'd stake my mop on it. Wait, you have a son? Yes, I do, Mr. Hyde. Is that a surprise to you? My boy lives in Manhattan. Boy, it's even even back in the... I think this is... Uh, see, by the time this is recording, I think this is before really... Actually, no, this might be around the time where New York became a really crap hole, like, because... Around like the 70s and 80s, like New York was like the place to be, sort of. But there was a lot of bad pot spots in New York. Although I heard modern times, it might be going back to that in some places. But yeah, there was a time it was really bad. Uh, you know, I never lived there myself. But anyway, what's your son like? What's he like, your son? I mean, and what's he doing in New York? I assume he's like probably works uh, like either Broadway or like uh, uh, Wall Street or something like that. Oh, there he goes. He works on Wall Street. Wow, he probably makes a, quite a bit of bank, I bet. No kidding. Rosa the Wonder Maid and her stockbroker son. You pegged him true, Mr. Hyde. 
He went to a good university and found himself a nice place to work. Yes, he did. I bet you're proud of him. Mm, yes, I guess it seems like that from your point of view. You're not proud of him? It's not that, Mr. Hyde. It's just he doesn't understand me one bit. Well, you're a pretty complex person. Yeah, right. Uh, do you know what he said to me, do you? He told me to quit my job. Can you imagine? Come to Manhattan, he says. We'll live together, he says. I mean, sounds like a nice offer to me. Yeah, it sounds like he's trying to take care of his mom. Oh, and what about it strikes you as nice? I do good, honest work here. I support myself with my own two hands. I'm not so old that I need my son to take care of me. Isn't that the point of having children is to make sure they take care of you when you hit that ripe old age? Although a lot of people in a lot of countries tend to just dump their old folks into homes and stuff like that. They're like, oh, thanks for taking care of me. Here you go. And I'm sure not changing my life just because he says so. Uh-uh, not me, not Rosa. This is a familiar tune. She sounds just like my mother. Well, thank you in advance, Mr. Hyde. So where's this wine bottle? Well, let's see. Two of them are in the kitchen, and one's in the restaurant. Sounds like the old lady has a serious drinking problem. Uh, don't tease, Mr. Hyde. We had three guests order wine tonight. Mr. Pa Miss Parker had, had only had one. Mr. Summer drank himself the second bottle. And the third was the young woman at 216. Iris, I think her name is. Anyway, I was so busy when I was cleaning out the tables and cooking and so forth. And well, I just lost track of which bottle belonged to her. That omelet better be worth it. Oh, it is. Don't you worry. Anyway, could you please find a bottle? When you do, just peel the label off and deliver it to the room, okay? Good. I've got laundry to do, so I can't talk anymore. Busy, 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 you know. And thank you again, Mr. Hyde. Great. Rosa hurries off. 9.40 p.m. All right, got to find these water bo uh, water bottles. Uh, wine bottles, so. All right, I believe the kitchen has a couple of them first. So, let's go back to slow down again. All right. All right, we got this bottle here. There's a wine bottle next to the microwave. This is a bottle of red wine. Okay, so we got a question. We'll ask that later. And then the other bottle should be... Uh, I think it's supposed to be... I, th I thought it was supposed to be... Maybe I went around the long way, so hold on, let's try again. Oh, there it is. I thought it was around here somewhere. All right, there's this bottle. There's a bottle of wine on the counter. This is a bottle of white wine. Okay, so we got the question of white wine, so we gotta ask each of the individuals their wine preference. Let's go find that other bottle. And the other bottle is actually in the restaurant. So let's go there. It should be, yeah, over here. All right, let's check this one out. There's a bo white wine bottle on the table. This is a bottle of rosé. Rosé wine, huh? All right. Okay, so now we need to, now that we know the bottles, we also need something to help us get this off. So we're gonna have to go back to our room first. Now our boss gave us something to help us with this earlier. So let's go back there. Walking along the sunshine trail, trying to find some stuff in my room. Let's see. I think it's in. I forgot which box it's in. Let's double check them really quick. Uh, no, not this one. Okay. Sorry, I play this only once a week, so I forget. I forget sometimes. All right. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the products it's in over in the box, so we want this thing. This should get the label off in no time. I take the adhesive remover. All right, now that we've got that, now we just need to figure out who had which bottle. I mean, I know, but we still need to ask this for the purposes of the puzzle, so. It's one of those types of puzzles. You actually have to talk to everyone first, so. So you need to go to room 216 and talk to Iris. 
Yes, who's there? It's me, Kyle Hyde. Mr. Hyde, I figured you would be drunk in a ditch by now. You and me both, sister. Yeah, what wine did you drink tonight? I'll make it quick. You drink wine with dinner, right? And why? Did you want to see if there was any left? I don't suppose you remember what kind? Rosé. It was quite nice. Why on earth are you asking me this? Uh, just checking. Don't mind me. So you came up to my room to ask me. So that's it. Nothing more? Well, good night then. What are you expecting, Iris? Iris turns and closes the door behind her, but I, I assume that seems like a silly thing to bug someone about, but... Alright, anyway. Okay, let's go to room... Let's see... Yeah, let's go to room 211. We'll talk to Summer. Ask him about it. Summer! Yeah, I know we're not the biggest fan of this guy, apparently, because we've been very short with him recently. Who is it? Kyle Hyde. But do you have some business with me, Mr. Hyde? I've got something to ask you. He's like, okay. What wine did you drink? What's in your milk? Or beer, or whatever. I don't know. A wallet. It's what's in your wallet. Never mind. You had wine with dinner, right? But of course, food without wine is like a body without a soul to fill its... What kind? Um, well, it was white. Yes, a crisp Chardonnay with hints of apple and a rich... Don't care. <laughs> oh, I, I see. Well, <laughs> I guess we're finished here. Uh, yes, well, good evening, sir. Summer closes the door. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, ever since that whole conversation, he's just well like, you know what? I don't, I don't care what you think, dude. And then let's talk to the... I mean, we know now by process of elimination, but um, but now we need to talk to her. Sorry, I was like, wasn't clicking for some reason. No one seems to be in. Maybe these doors are soundproof. Hmm. Well... There's a, since we can't do that, we might as well go go grab the drinks. So, see, rosé, white, so we need the red wine, so. All right. Oops, I, I don't know why I clicked on that. That was a <laughs> accident. I went to the first door I saw for some weird reason. So I don't know why I did that. Okay, well, anyway, she grabbed the red wine, which is still in the... Uh, restaurant, so or no, wait, never mind. The, the rose is in the restaurant. What, what am I doing? So it was over here. <laughs> Man, my brain's all jumbled today. Let's see, that was the yeah, yeah, uh, hmm, red wine. I bet that's the bottle that Helen ordered. Looks like there's still a bit of wine in the bottle of the bottom of the bottle. I don't need the whole bottle, just the label. Okay, so. Okay, let me go ahead and make a quick save. It actually is possible to uh, game over here. So. Because, uh, um, getting the wine off or getting the label off you can actually rip the thing so uh it and it caused a game over so i wanted to do that just in case so. all right let's see adhesive remover use on the bottle so you just need to get all all gooey mm, gooey 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 yum 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 let's get it all over this thing yeah yeah that's hot <laughs> you hear the goop, the goop sound that it makes? So, that I was about to say, I thought I got it. So, all right, let's just be very careful. I yeah, don't like. I mean, you could probably be a bit more aggressive with it. Like I said, but it is possible to rip this thing. So, 
Yeah, I don't know how you could get a game over with ripping the label, but okay. Okay, there we go. I take the wine label. I wonder what kind of memories this wine holds for the old gal. Guess it's time she and I had ourselves another chat. All right. Yeah, prepare for the uh, prepare for the storytelling, folks. Oh boy. Eh, it's not that bad, but it's just you know. They. That's what happens when you talk to old people. They get very reminiscent. Very reminiscent. So. I, I just, I'm starting to do that at my age, so. Ah, Mr. Hyde. What brings you here? Rosa has her hands full. She asked me to bring you this wine label. Oh, you came all this way just for me. Please, please come in. Yeah. Looks like she's got the same of the usual amenities, just like everyone else. TV, lights, bed. Yeah, we can't really interact with anything, unfortunately. Oh, well. I'm sorry that you had to run all over the hotel for my sake. Don't worry about it. I got nothing better to do. Wait, aren't we trying to solve some minor, like, gra gather some stuff for our boss, find out about, like, Bradley and all? Oh, I never mind. Oh, Posh, I'm sure you're a very busy man. I know he's just trying to be nice. But now that you're here, please feel free to sit for a spell. My room is your room. Thanks. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah? Oh, yes, dear. Don't you get excited when friends come to pay you a visit? Depends on my case. I'm a very, I'm a very introverted man, so... Everyone likes to have visitors. Oh, and you're not just any visitor. I find our conversations quite peculiar, Mr. Hyde, but in a very good way. You make me feel like I did ten years ago. Hmm. Before the anniversary. What happened back then? Yeah, what happened ten years ago? Oh, nothing. I'm just reminiscing. Please forgive this old woman her fancy. The old gal is hiding something. Time to drag it out of her. And we just uh, just grab her and throw her under the bed and just like start shaking her like an airplane or something like that. Get a hold of yourself! Tell us! Where are the drugs? Swear to me! You know. But Mr. Hyde, I thought you brought a wine label for me. I did. We just gotta give it to her. Show. Boom. Take it. Here's her label. Oh, thank you. This is simply wonderful. It will make for such a nice memory. Got to put in a scrapbook or something? What if I ask you something? Eh, what would that be? Rosa said you shared that wine with someone a few years ago. Who was it? Does it really matter? Hold it. Actually. Uh, yeah, how with it? Who was it? No. Come on, I'm curious. But it isn't the end of the world, but it's been bugging me for a while. Now? You told me you'd been here before. So when did you share a bottle of wine with someone? Mr. Hyde, you are persistent. If you must know, that day took place ten years ago. So the guy you met ten years ago? What happened to him? She looks pretty shaken up. Hold it. Let me guess. You don't know, do you? Yeah, or... Yeah, that's it. I was trying to think of her a second. Like, you don't know where he is, do you? I'm sure he's fine. It's just... We just haven't been in contact since that day. Yeah, that's sad of here. Sure. So, okay, now we got a few questions to ask her. So, who was this person? Let's talk about the person you met 10 years ago. You hate him. No, you care about him. The person is pretty special to you, right? Oh, yes. That person meant the world to me. But then I... I... Hmm. I betrayed him. Betrayed him? Yeah, it's getting... 
it's uh it's getting it's getting dicey how did you betray him why did you betray him eh, because i'm selfish because i was only thinking of myself of what i i thought i wanted i left him behind mr hyde i abandoned him Why don't you contact him? I wouldn't think it'd be hard to contact this mystery, mystery person. But I bet I know why you haven't. He forgot about him. No, no, you miss him too much. You think about him a lot, don't you? Oh, yes, each and every day. I want so badly to see him again, but alas, I cannot. I can't bear the thought of causing the boy more grief. Eh, maybe Rosa was on the money. Who is this mysterious person? I think I know who you're talking about. I... but how? It's your son, isn't it? <gasps> Let's see if Rosa knows her hunches. Yes, that was the man I met ten years ago. My only son. What's his name? Alan. Alan, huh? Hmm. Yeah, your son's name is Alan? Alan! Sorry, no, no weird, uh, no weird, uh, Jurassic uh, Park 3 references here. Your son's name is Alan? Yes, that's correct. Alan Parker. Nice name. Yeah, Parker, huh? We met here for dinner ten years ago and then went our separate ways. Any chance you gave him a fountain pen? Why, yes. Yes, I did. But how on earth could you possibly know that? You gave him that pen, huh? Wait right here. Huh? What, what does this have to do with Alan? With Alan's pen? Yeah, give me two minutes. I'll be right back. Uh, oh, all right. Yeah, now we have to give it, go back to uh, Summer because of that, from that pen. So let's go bug him about it. Who is it? Uh, who is it? Kyle Hyde. Yeah, it won't take a few minutes. But do you have some new business with me, sir? Yeah, your fountain pen. I need it. My, my pen, but you gave it to me not two hours ago. Why do you now decide? Just give me the damn pen. <laughs> All right. Man, Summer is just such a, you know, a, w a wimp. I take the fountain pen back from Summer. This should do it. At the risk of having your response delivered to the bridge of my nose, don't ask. Very well. Summer gives me the wary, wary eye and shuts the door. Oof. Yeah, it's all... This whole this whole hotel is a, a place of conveniences and connections. Intertwined, as it were. Good evening, Mr. Hyde. Won't you come inside? Yeah, I just need to talk to you about that pen, so... All right, we need to show her the pen so we can go on to the next section. Ever seen this before? Where did you get this? It's his, it's my son's. Ah, uh, yep, here, here it comes. It's your son's pen, huh? So this is your son's pen, huh? That's correct. I gave it to him ten years ago when we were finally reunited. You had to be reunited? You were on the outs for a while, huh? It was because I... I... I left him behind. I abandoned him, Mr. Hyde. I walked out of his life. Mr. Hyde... You must tell me. How did that pin come to be in your possession? I found it in the restaurant. A guest dropped it. A guest dropped? So my son? 
That means Alan is in this hotel? No, he's not. But then, who dropped the pin if not him? A friend of his. Well, he's not much of a friend, actually. But, but why? How? Oh, this is all too much. Alan is missing. Guy with the pin is looking for him. My boy is missing? Please, Mr. Hyde, tell me that is not true. As I understand it, Alan wrote a book and this chump stole it from him. Sounds like your boy was shook up about it and vanished soon after. That, that can't be. Wish I had better news for you, but there it is. My son had always dreamed of being a writer. On that night ten years ago, he told me that he'd almost achieved his dream. It was hard work, but I knew he would never give up. It was a dream, after all. Oh, to think that had been taken from him. It breaks my heart. It truly does. Yeah, that's a shame. Tell me about this theft, Mr. Hyde. Why? I want to find the man who stole his work and make him pay. Look, you're a tough broad, and I like that, but it's too late. The guy who plagiarized your son's novel already fessed up. He's searching for your son so he can clear things up and make amends. I think the real question is whether or not your son will forgive him. I have faith that he will forgive this man. I know my boy, Mr. Hyde. Alan will surely forgive him. You seem pretty sure. And that's just the way he is. His heart is large and he has forgiven greater trespasses before this. After all, he forgave his own mother for turning her back on him. She's finally gonna spill it. Mr. Hyde, may I implore you for a favor? Would you lend your ear to a sad and shameful story? Go right ahead. I've got all day. Years ago, you see, there lived an absolute fool of a woman. In her youth, she became enraptured with show business and magic. But soon she married and her husband convinced her to settle down. She agreed, but her secret heart yearned for a return to the lights and the glory. In time, the pull of the stage became too great, and she abandoned her family. At first, her return to the world of magic filled her life with color. She had chosen the path of the entertainer once more. It became her everything. The woman lived for the moment when applause swept over her like a wave. But to her dismay, the more acclaim she received, the emptier she began to feel. Suddenly, being known as the greatest magician of all time mattered not. All she could think of was meeting the son she left behind so long ago. What a fool she was. So the woman set up a meeting with her son. No, not at first. Their first encounter was a simple twist of fate. The woman had been called to perform at the grand opening of a new hotel. By the strangest of chances, her son was invited to the same party. When she saw him, she was filled with fear and certain he would be enraged. But instead, he took her by the hand and forgave her. That day, they made a promise to each other. A promise to meet in ten years at that same hotel. And ten years later, they did that very thing. The boy told her of his own dream, of how he longed to become a writer. woman presented her son with a small fountain pen to help him on his way. It was the first and last gift she ever gave him, or so I hear. They made no more promises, arranged no more meetings. A year after meeting her son at the hotel, the woman quietly retired. And this time, she walked away from the stage for good. So where'd she go next? That is the end of my story, Mr. Hyde. Where she went and how she spent her days after that, no one knows. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what I heard. Oh? The woman's son told his thieving pal how much the hotel meant to him. Said it was his most special place in the world. A place filled with memories that he treasured more than anything. At least that's what I heard. Oh, Mr. Hyde. I think you should have this pen. Maybe you can give it back to its owner someday. 
I, I don't have the words. Anyway, sorry to take up all your time. I'll see you around. Ellen is Helen's son. Didn't see that one coming. Summer's gonna be do is gonna do backflips when he hears this, and I'll probably have to tell him. Otherwise, I'll be awkward. Okay, Hyde, time to think. Take a second and get your thoughts together. Just before nine, I made my way down to the bar for a couple of belts. Louis was working in the bar and doing a damn fine job of it. The next person to stumble into the bar was... Well, I mean, we know the truth. Help. That's right. The old lady from 212, Helen Parker, was the next person to enter the bar. Me and Helen shot the breeze while she sipped a gimlet. The drink loosened her up, and she told me how she'd stayed here before. Next question. After a couple of drinks, I decided to split the bar. I picked Rosa and Dunning's brains to learn more about the hotel's history. I didn't get much, but what they did spill was pretty interesting. For one, the bar was built for the hotel's 10-year anniversary, which means the hotel was built 20 years ago. Also, I got Dunning to talk about when he took over the place. It was five years ago. That's right, five years ago. Put down cash on the barrel head and took over the same that same day. Next, Rosa came by and made me deliver a wine label to Helen. After ransacking the whole place for the bottle, I finally got the label. What kind of wine was she drinking again? Well, red wine. I mean, we just learned this just a second ago, so... That's right. Helen had a bottle of red. Went for the same stuff she had ten years ago. When I dropped off the label, Helen was all smiles and started chattering me up chatting me up. We got to talking about who she came here with ten years ago. Her companion's name was Ellen. That's right. It was her son Alan. I found out the pen summer dropped is the same one Helen gave her son. I told Helen and she spilled her entire life story. It ain't much for sob stories, but I listened as patiently as I could. Helen told me that she left her son to become a... A bartender! Detective? Ah, oh, that's the best job. No, magician. That's right, a magician. Still can't wrap my mind around that one. She left her family to pursue the dream, and it's tortured her ever since. Maybe she sleeps better tonight. Night has fallen over the city and the hotel. I know the dark. It's a cover that lets people's bad sides run wild. Envy, doubt, grief, they all come out at night. Bradley, what do you think of at night when the darkness comes? Got until dawn to find out. So we got till dawn to find out. Will we be able to find out what we're trying to do? Will we be able to become a night stalker and find out all the little tidbits that people are hiding in this hotel. We'll find out next time in chapter seven of hotel dusk room 215. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.